My name is Dr. Kenneth Ataga, MD. I'm an adult hematologist at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Dr. Ataga and colleagues studied the use of crezonlizumab, formerly cell G1, in patients with sickle cell disease. Painful crisis uh, in patients with sickle cell disease represents the primary reason uh, that patients typically would see healthcare providers. And so there are two basic approaches to treating painful crisis. Uh, so one of them is uh, an intervention type approach uh, in which uh, physicians try to uh, either shorten the duration of a painful crisis once it's, it's ongoing or try to um, abort a painful crisis while, while it's ongoing. Uh, at the current time, uh, there's no approved FDA medications to um, intervene and shorten the duration of a painful crisis, although a variety of clinical studies are ongoing. Um, so in treatment of um, painful crisis while they are ongoing at this time, the treatment is mainly supportive. So we give patients pain medicines, um, IV fluids, um, oxygen perhaps, and uh, depending on what complications patients might have, we might also need to give them blood transfusions. Uh, a second approach is the preventive approach, uh, in which we give patients medications or intervene somehow to try and decrease the frequency of painful crisis. Uh, so for this, uh, there's one drug approved called hydroxyurea, and hydroxyurea has been shown to be uh, quite efficacious in decreasing the frequency of sickle cell disease related complications. It uh, has been shown to decrease the need for blood transfusions and decrease the um, uh, need for hospitalizations as well. And there's also um, increasing evidence that hydroxyurea might increase the survival of patients with sickle cell disease. Uh, despite all the benefits of hydroxyurea, however, uh, patients uh, on these medications continue to get sick, so they can still experience painful crisis, and they can still have a variety of complications related to sickle cell disease, and they still have a shortened life expectancy compared to the general population. So it's clear that we need more treatments. We know that the primary pathophysiological problem in sickle cell disease is the presence of this abnormal sickle hemoglobin uh, that uh, can polymerize when the oxygen level is low. So in the presence of deoxygenation, this polymerizes. Uh, but we also know that um, the, uh, primary, the vessel occlusion in sickle cell disease is related to the adhesion of sickle red blood cells as well as white blood cells to the vascular endothelium. There's strong evidence that the process is initiated by P-selecting. Okay? Uh, and so um, uh, it makes sense that if you're able to block p this interaction um, by blocking the interaction between p selecting and these cells, that you might be able to um, decrease the vasoclusion process. And indeed, uh, a variety of in vitro and in vivo studies um, in sickle cell mice have actually shown that when these mice have been treated such that they were able to block the interaction between p selecting and um, uh, these cells, uh, there was a, a decrease in the adhesion process. And um, other studies have actually shown that um, using heparin, which is a commonly available drug, but heparin has been shown to block p selectin as well. And in patients who were given heparin, uh, found that by, after, by blocking p selectin, they were able to demonstrate increase in microvascular blood flow. Okay. So based on this piece of uh, data, uh, so we did embark on this study. So uh, the sustained trial is a, um, um, was a multi-center um, study, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study. Um, and um, this uh, study um, looked at uh, patients who were eligible and um, divided patients into three treatment groups. Uh, so patients were randomized um, to get either the high dose of the medicine called, previously called CLG1, it's now called crizanlizumab, 5 mg per kilogram body weight, the low dose, 2.5 mg per kilogram body weight, and placebo. They got um, loading doses every two weeks. Uh, following which they got treatments once every four weeks for a total of about one year, about 52 weeks. Um, and um, we evaluated a variety of um, efficacy endpoints. And uh, what we found was that um, when we compared the median rates of painful crisis per year, uh, there was uh, a 45% reduction uh, in the median rates of painful crisis uh, in the patients who got the high-dose treatment compared to patients who got placebo. So this was not only clinically meaningful, uh, it, was only, it was also statistically significant. And so, so we're quite pleased with that. And, and we did some um, what we call subgroup analysis as well to look at subpopulations within the uh, intention to treat population. And we found that regardless of whether patients were getting hydroxyurea, they had a benefit with this drug. So patients on hydroxyurea had an even greater decrease in the frequency of painful crisis and patients not on hydroxyurea had an improvement as well. So um, that was good to see. 
Uh, we also looked at patients who had different kinds of sickle cell disease. So this drug seems to have um, benefit not just in patients who have um, homozygous sickle cell disease, but in other forms of sickle cell disease as well. Overall, we're able to see um, quite um, encouraging um, beneficial effects with treatment with the high-dose um, crizanizumab. That is good. I think with the increased interest in drug development and um, development of other treatment approaches in sickle cell disease, we are very excited about the possibilities going forward. Yeah.